fresh, some fr some fresh, some fresh, some fun, fresh, fresh fun, fresh fun ways to show gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. There are so many ways to let someone know how grateful you are. You could give someone a shout out with your hands. <laughs> Woo! You're awesome! You can send an all caps text message. You are awesome! You can use the ancient art of flag semaphore. Go! You! But my favorite way to show gratitude is through song. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. I look pretty cool, right? <laughs> let me, let me, let me see that back. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Uh, 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 uh. Because you make me. Is that what? Is that what I look like? How embarrassing! Never showing gratitude again, 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 again. In today's story, we'll hear about a time when King David showed gratitude in a really big way. And he wasn't even a little bit embarrassed. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. After many years of war and uncertainty, David had finally become the king of Israel. But something was still missing from the royal city of Jerusalem. The Ark of the Lord belongs here. The Ark was a wooden chest that in some special way carried the presence of God among the Israelites. It had been stolen by the Philistines and then returned, and now it was sitting in the home of a man named Obed-Edom. We'll set up a tent right here for the ark. Let's go get it. David's wife, Michelle, was, um, let's just say, less than enthusiastic. The dust on those back roads takes the curl out of my hair. So David gathered up all his best soldiers and marched over to the place where the ark rested. This is a wonderful day. An incredible day. An absolutely fantastic day. With great care, the men lifted the heavy ark with carrying poles. Wonderful. Excellent. Let's go. That's one step closer to Jerusalem. Two, three. Are you seriously gonna count the whole way? Wait, stop. We've only come six steps. That's okay. We need to thank God for everything he's done. Right then and there, David sacrificed a bull and a calf to honor God. Okay, now we can move on. One, two, three, lift. Just walking isn't enough. We should dance for God. The ark's kind of heavy. Everyone else, if you're not carrying the ark, celebrate, sing, shout, blow the trumpets. The people shouted and ran alongside the ark. David danced before the Lord all the way to Jerusalem. As the laughing, shouting parade arrived, Michelle stared in disbelief from a window. There was her husband, the king, dancing in a simple linen garment with all the common people. Unbelievable. He looks ridiculous. Certainly not like a king. Down on the street, David continued to dance all the way to the beautiful tent he had set up. Everybody behind me, let's dance. Okay, keep on moving. Now, let's switch it up. Time for a breather. Let's put the ark right here. One, two, three, down. David made more sacrifices to honor God. Then he stood before the people. The ark has returned. God bless you. He is the one who rules over us all. He deserves our thanks for everything he's done. So let's keep celebrating. We've got some fresh bread and dates and raisin cakes for everyone. Though all of Jerusalem had turned out for the festivities, one person still refused to celebrate. When David returned home, Michal met him, furious. 
You're the king of Israel, and you've really made yourself look good today, right? Dancing around in that thing? A linen apron. It's what the priests wear. But you're a king. You made a fool of yourself in front of all of your officials and even the servants. I did it to honor God. He made me ruler over his people. I can't even. I will celebrate to honor the Lord. You already said that. Oh, I'm not done. I will bring even less honor to myself if it will bring more honor to God. What is that in your beard? Raisins. <laughs> you want to do the electric slide? No. While Michelle cared more about appearances than anything else, David fixed his gaze on God because he knew nothing was more important than celebrating to thank God for all the amazing things he'd done. King David wasn't embarrassed to show how grateful he was to God, and it didn't matter who saw, because David knew that honoring God was more important than honoring himself. So he danced! And maybe he sang, You make me feel like thank you! Thank you for being you! You make me feel God had done so much for David, so thanking God must have felt like a party! And maybe he sang, I'm not embarrassed. You know why? Because God made the universe. God made you and me. And God made it possible for us to have a relationship with him when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. We should be celebrating with our hands. Woo! With semaphore flags. You are amazing. You are incredible. With singing and dancing and praying, shouting it from the rooftops. We should be celebrating God any way we know how because that's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate what God has done. And if someone asks you why you're celebrating, tell them. Sometimes telling people about God is the best way to show him you're grateful. You make me feel like that, yeah. I'm a for being you.
Ah, 